and you're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show. Welcome on in as we recap last week's game and look ahead to next week's game. Actually, Coach, you're going to be playing in 48 hours from now. I mean, yeah. there, there's, oh, let's maybe turn that down a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, we got, we got a game to be played, and we're ready to go. And uh, I tell you what, this is going to be an interesting game to see how this thing plays out. For uh, for Utah State. All right, so let's talk a little bit back and uh, and recap the game that we had and that we saw against uh, against San Diego State. And that's you said that was a really tough, that was a really physical team, and boy, we saw that on display. Yeah, well, San Diego State was uh, you know as advertised and what we expected walking into the game. And from uh, this year to last year, they returned those big guys up front. And uh, you know, I was really the the tight end uh, is is a really physical football player and. Um, so, as I say, as advertised they were, and, uh, you know, we uh, did not play well and uh, overall, and a lot of reasons for that and a lot of things that we can fix, and some of that's going to uh, hopefully carry over to this week. So we're excited about an opportunity to compete again, and our kids have had a great attitude, have great practices as they've gone through time here, and we understand uh, the deficiencies that we have, and we're working through them. You know, you've talked about uh... – I mean, we, we've mentioned the short week, and you're not using that as an excuse at all. And no. I'm sure, imagine, some of these kids want to, and some of these coaches want to get this game behind them as quickly as possible. And you, you get that wish with playing on Thursday. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to get out and go again, you know. And I think they've handled the week again well. It's been on Saturday. Sunday we practiced and uh, went Monday normal. And Tuesday was this morning and got done early. And we get on the plane tomorrow and roll. So it'll be good to get out and, and play again. And I think this team needs every practice that they can get. They need every lift they can get. And they've, they've handled it all well. They've had good attitudes. And they're excited to go play. And uh, I think that's a, that's, that's a credit to them and uh, them understanding exactly you know where they sit and the things we've talked about. What are... Uh... What, what has been the point of emphasis this week? And, and and what are the things you can work on and address going into a short week? Well, I think the biggest thing for us is just, you know, getting a, be, being honest and truthful. Um, sometimes coaching is as brutally honest and, and players are brutally honest. And to be able to sit down and talk about, you know, where we're at from a, a deficiency standpoint is all fine and dandy. But now what can we do as coaches to help them? And, and our kids are, uh, you know, they they understand that, yes, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to try to do the best to help them get where they need to be. Um, and like I say, they, they've handled it well. Uh, we're being very positive with them. Uh, they understand it's a process. You need to be able to respect this process. And I just challenge them to, you know, believe in where we are and, um, I think it's just, again, I say it's really important to just communicate with kids at this point and say, this is why this happened. Yeah. Um, and can we be better as coaches? You bet. Can every position coach grind better? Myself, absolutely. Can you too? And, and learn from it. And then as coaches, the challenge is to put the kids in the best position to fit their skill set. And it's not just because it worked a year ago or it worked for this team or that team. It's what we have and how we can best mold it together and let it build and grow and, you know, when it magically happens, it'll all magically happen. It's not a, you know, there's, there's just no special recipe to it. It's, a, it's about players and allowing players to play at their best abilities. Gary Anderson joining us for the Coaches Show right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Coming up a little bit later on the program, we'll have a chance to uh, chat with uh, Frank Miley, Stacy Collins, as well as Bodie Reeder uh, as we get a chance to chat with some of the coordinators. Uh, but, Coach, I want to talk a little bit about the offense. I know there's some people uh, that, that – you know, the, you watch and you have some concerns about the offense. What needs to do to yeah, try to get too. them back on track? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, we, we just, like I stated after the game, and, you know, after the game I was obviously not real happy, and, and uh, nobody should be. Um, so if I look and I say where we need to improve is we need to, you know, find an identity really and get us an opportunity to be able to use our playmakers and, and find a way to get those kids involved and consistently get them involved. And, and that is that, that that's a challenge right now for whatever reasons that are out there. And, you know, I, I get asked a lot of questions about offense and I'm, I'm not an offensive coach, so yeah. I can't answer all those questions as we go through there. And, um, but, we, you know, it all starts up front on both sides of the football. And if you look at us and say, okay, where do we have to play better to take the next step? It, it it's in the front on both sides. Um, and, and that will be the challenge as we continue to move forward. We got kids that are accepting that challenge and battling their tails off to get better. And um, on both sides of the ball, and we got coaches that are doing the same thing. So I, I would say to me, it's the, the ability to get the ball to the playmakers and, and organize them in the game plan and then be able to consistently um, you know, have some success up front and do our best again as coaches to put them in a position to do what they can do. You and I talked about this earlier today on the flagship station, but 
you like the uh, the buy-in from the players and, and and their attitude throughout this. Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Um, you know, and I I don't know. I'm I'm a little weird, I guess. These these challenges are challenges I look I look forward to, and I don't like being in the situation that we're in right now. But uh, you know, throughout my career, I've always liked to go to take on challenges, and I'm excited about this challenge that we're in right now, and so are the kids. Um, you know, there's no there's no magic in a bottle. The the magic in the bottle is the recipe for for Utah State, and um, our kids are, are bought in. I think they're excited to be able to continue to prepare. They understand that when they deserve to win a game, they're going to win a game, and then they'll win another one, and they'll win another one, and they'll keep that thing going where it needs to be. And a lot of the kids in, in this program have, have had some success, and then it's gone back down a little bit, and then it has some success, and then it's just been okay. And what you really want to try to do is stabilize that to where you're having a pretty high level of success every single year. And to me, that's being a good team, which we were last year, but you're being a great team most years. Yeah. You know, the Boise States, or wherever it may be, the San Diego State's you, um, almost every year. It's pretty much a great year for, for those teams somehow, some way, and and that's where you want to be, not just be good. And and right now we're not on track to even be good. So you know we're at uh, we're at ground zero as far as getting ourselves to get to that point this season. Um, but you know it, the buy-in from the kids you ask, I think it's awesome. Uh, this arena, uh, Nevada team that uh, obviously is certainly really good. We'll talk about them coming up next, and then we'll shift gears and uh, talk to some of the coordinators for this Utah State football team. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Welcome on back. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. All right, uh, a lot to break down and a lot to uh, uh, a lot to chat about in tonight's game, but uh, or coming up on Thursday's game. Uh, let's talk about this Nevada team. They started the season two and zero, uh, and they've got an offense that seems to be really, really clicking right now. Yeah, they do. They uh, they got a tremendous quarterback quarterback that throws the ball very well, and a, and a crew of wide receivers, so um, tall and. Speedy guys that uh, is a good mixture of receivers, and you know they've uh, they've been in the system for a couple of years now, so they've got a good a good feel of it. So it's a it's a uh, potent offense for sure. Uh, when you look at what they do offensively, is a lot of it through the air, uh, they're, they're, where they're getting a lot of their uh, their chunk yardage. Yeah, it is. a lot of it's through the air and, and big plays. The quarterback's ability to throw the ball a deep ball down the field is is really really impressive. He does a great job of 
getting it down the field to the spots where it needs to be. Um, but it's a lot through the air, but they do also run the football. They'll have uh, different styles as far as they'll get in different personnel groups and get pretty big at times and try to smash you around and even have some wildcat things. And then they'll, um, they'll run the ball in the spread sets also. So it's a, it's a, it, it's a pretty balanced offense, but I, yeah. it's obviously more towards the pass. But they're not gonna, it's, it's not Mike Leach where they're just going to throw it every snap. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing when you look at uh, this team, and, and, you know, you and I, we talked a little bit during the break as teams, you can see them building, and, you know, year by year by year, you start to see them progressing. And I think Nevada has put in a long, hard row to try to get this thing where it needs to be. And it seems like now they're, they're starting to get some experience in a lot of key positions, and it seems like it's paying off for them. Yeah, and they've got a, a, good, a good senior class that's uh, been, you know, competitive for them. And I think they've done a nice job of, of – uh, recruiting um, and they they built that thing and it continues to grow and you know just from a year ago till now um, it is a, it is a noticeable difference as far as the speed at the wideout position and it's the some of the same kids but they're just a year older now and they're playing at a really high level um, and then some of their seniors that have uh, were good players last year uh, have really been highlighted because of the play of the quarterback quite frankly and this quarterback was there last year he played. Uh, a little bit uh, sparingly back and forth, but now he's really just, uh, you know, we, we probably want to send every quarterback we ever get here to whatever academy he may have gone to or whatever because he, he is really spinning it at a very high level right now. Is there a moment, like, and I'm sure it's different for all players, but when you have a young guy in your system and you've got a bunch of them, is, is there like a, you know, is there a moment where you see it just kind of click? Because we I watched this guy a little bit last year and it, didn't, it looked like he had some, some potential, but nothing like with what we're seeing right now. Is there just a moment where all of a sudden it just kind of settles in for a guy? Well, I think it's really just being part of a program and being part of a system. You know, you, you go through those off seasons and for, for our team, you know, everybody didn't have that opportunity this year, but when you have the youth and the, the, the number of youth, they have to go through those. And it's not just the physical part of it, getting bigger and stronger. It's yeah. the mental part of it. It's being with your team. It's understanding your scheme. It's being in and out of it through spring balls and going through all the meetings that you have. And that's when youth grows within a program. Um, and, you know, it's uh, again, I say it's mental and it's physical. And that's this young man has obviously made some great strides in there and a number of kids on their team. And um, he, he had an opportunity to be able to do that this year. And it was a unique year. And he found a way to get it done, which is uh, good for him. But I, I, I don't know if a light just clicks on one day and says, OK, here I am. I'm ready to go. I think you earn that as a player to be able to feel comfortable mentally and get your body prepared physically to play in this league, because this league will chew you up and spit you out if you're not prepared. It's it's I'm being in it for a year now and then seeing it this year. Uh, I am I'm really, really impressed with the way that uh, the coaches in this league that they prepare and they get themselves where they need to be and, and tr quite frankly trying to catch up with the boys season the San Diego State's pretty much on both sides that's what everybody's trying to do um, and, and I think that gap is closing for some programs as you look at it and we'll see as this year goes on and next year when we get back to normal what takes place but uh, a lot of that it's, it's just good recruiting and I think they've stabilized where they're recruiting and how their classes are balanced is important and that's to me the most important part of stabilizing a program become a highly competitive every year. I think there's sometimes when you look at maybe struggles offensively, and uh, Aja, you may want to get a little bit of a echo in our ears here. But uh, kind of like that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, back in studio, if you can click that off, we can uh, we we could certainly live without hearing ourselves in our own ear right now. Um, in fact, let's go to break and try to get that figured out. Uh, you're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.
I'm back. Yeah, we're still still having some technical issues, Coach. Just uh, pop your mic down like that, and we'll just talk like that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, recruiting at this point for this team and what you're trying to uh, – with the dead period the way that it is, with the COVID situation, how difficult is it to try to find ways to recruit and bring these kids in and, and, and have some kind of a relationship with them and be able to see – you know what's going on there yeah well you know fortunately for us we will not have a, a big recruiting class and a lot of that lies to where with our seniors on the team or what have you but the best from a sheer we're going to recruit some kids and so it's yeah. communicating with them um you know facetime uh getting with the parents on facetime and really trying to build the relationships a little bit and then when it comes time to open up we'll get them here and get them on campus and do what we do because that's to us that's the biggest part of the recruiting process is getting face to face and them seeing logan understanding logan what it is and because every fit is a unique fit wherever you end up going so um numbers will be low but i think we're in a good shape i i feel lucky this yeah. year that we don't have to go out and recruit a large class if we had 25 you know first year we 54 kids um if we had to do something like that this year it would be very probably impossible uh, but the low numbers we have this year will hang in there the the challenge for us is the best recruiting we can do this year is develop the young men yeah. that we brought here a year and a half ago into the program and continue building all the players in the program and then um hopefully we get an opportunity to be able to you know have some of our seniors return to play again and if that takes place then that'll be a huge boost are you able to treat this year a little differently knowing that you have a free year with some of these kids? Well, you know, that's always a that, that, that's a difficult part of this whole thing for me. Um, you know, you're playing young kids and you put young kids in spots. You know, I bring up Brock Lane again. Brock came in and he's had the opportunity to play and um, it's, it's proven to be too early for him. Yeah. Um, not in a bad way and I don't say that negatively. It's just that the stage was big and but he'll learn from that and he'll be better for that but we nice to have that happen in a spring ball let him grow and continue to develop so it's a you know that's a little bit of a tangled web that you weave and say well we're only playing eight games and this is a, a, a bonus year or what have you i want to win and our kids want to win and aggie nation wants to win and you know the position that we're in is has not been good for two weeks but what we can't do is say the number one most important thing to do on saturdays is win football games we can never look at it any other way so um we're playing some youth because we have to and not because they're in a position of oh we're going to play this guy instead of a senior we're not we're not playing that game the other element to it too though is the fact that and i know nobody wants to hear that but but there's some dividends that'll pay off eventually from this because, because you know you are throwing so many youngsters in the fire, and and a lot of teams have done that and they reap the rewards for that down the line. Yeah, it'll be good. You know, it, uh, it's an opportunity to play. There's nothing like getting better at football than playing football. I think that's one thing that's really important. And um, you know, we're, we we look and we sit back and, and just see the growth and the develop of some of these kids as they go through. You know, Pule is going to be back this week and he'll probably be our starting center because of situations that take place and he's a true freshman. Um, you know, that's, that'll keep Coach Woods awake at night a little bit, uh, but he's excited to jump back in and play, and uh, he, had, he was not with us for a couple of weeks. So there, I could go on and on. There's three or four kids that are in that position, but it's, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we need to look at it as that, but we also need to expect them to play at the highest level that they can possibly play at. Is there a feeling as if is, – okay, so and, – and by the way, we're trying to uh, – trying to make our way through some weird stuff here but uh do, you know Carson Terrell is a guy that uh, I know has had to miss a little bit of time is there a is there a feeling you may be able to get him back here in the near future yes we're, we're hopeful we can get Carson back uh, as soon as this week and we will we'll see we'll find out here um, he hasn't been uh, back full-time yet with this but uh, we need to get him in there and get him rolling but most importantly for him that's who I want to yeah the, the he that that kid was just absolutely crushed and um, but I believe he'll be able to get back with us this week and it's a high likelihood of that happening and that should give us a boost um, for the uh, uh, tight end position without a doubt because I think he's a very good player uh, there, yeah, there's certainly no doubt about that. And a guy that deserves every opportunity coming his way. And, and hopefully things certainly work out that way. From an injury standpoint, too, though, uh, Troy Leffridge came back. He, I mean, he'd been gone for a bit. How do you feel like he worked his way back into well, the Troy, system? Troy's a great player. You know, and he, when, when him and Shaq are back there, you know, that's uh, that would be proven right now to be our two best defenders. And, um, you know, that, I would say that carried over from last year. And their, their knowledge – their want to, and I, I just say this: their ability to be able to go through, you know, what what we're going through right now is is really a, a stabilization of 
what this team is about because they are grinders every single day and they're going to give their best every single day through practice in the weight room and they're going to work around. I think those two kids really did a nice job of grabbing some other guys and leading them a little yeah. bit right yeah. now, which has been nice to see. Um, and there, but Troy's back. Um, you know, I think Jalen will play this week, which will be nice to get those kids back in that position. And I want them all to have. Uh, you know, those are those are some seniors that we're talking about. And you know, whether they get to come back with us again, which we'd love to have them be back with us again or not, I want them to have at least this eight game experience as we go through here and you know put our best foot forward to help those kids have some uh, success. But you know, that's you know, I, we were keeping an eye on Jalen before the game and. Looked like he padded up, warmed yeah. up a little bit. What what are those conversations like uh, right before on a true game time decision with the player? Well, you know, the trainers are highly involved in giving the information. And when you have a kid that's as tough as Jalen, you can really just look in his eyes and say, are, are you okay? And the answer is, yes, I'm okay. But there's in his eyes, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you feel that in any way, shape, or form, and Coach Schramm did a great job of just coming up to me and saying, Coach, hey, he's, he's, not, he's not ready to go and 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 Jalen didn't kick back once it was that it was like yeah, yeah. You, know, you know you could see it he was like I don't want that but it's probably right and uh it's 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 not fun it's not easy but uh you know it pays dividends because if he'd have gone out there and it wouldn't have gone his way and missed the next four or five weeks then we'd all look at each other like what are we doing so there yeah it, there's there's you're not it, there's no perfect decision. It's not, oh, this is definitely going to work out, but I think it was the best decision without a doubt. Well, and one thing that we've always known from you and, and, and your staff throughout the year, those players' health and, and their safety and, and making sure they're in a good spot is always number one priority. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. Nothing else really uh, matters. I mean, all the other things are awesome, and uh, but how the kids are doing and what they're go, how they're growing up and their experiences that they're having. And, you know, even as we go through great times, there's there's awesome lessons to learn and there are easy lessons to learn sometimes in that situation. But when we go through these hard times, th there's I think there's life learned lessons when you go through adversity, especially with youth as they look back and they can look at so many different ways to be distracted and be derailed. And we talk about getting derailed all the time. You know, we're uh, we, we've, we've got a, a bumpy road we're going through right now but we're not derailed and if you get derailed you got to find a way to get yourself back on there yeah. and um you know kids are first and they always will be coach appreciate the time uh okay. look forward to chatting with the coordinators coming up next but good luck coming up yep, on they'll be here for you okay. there you go Gary. go Aggies. gary anderson uh the coach's show right here on the aggie sports network from learfield img college take a break come back and you'll hear from uh some of the coordinators straight ahead right here on the aggie sports network again from learfield img college
All right, welcome on back. You're listening to the Gary Anderson Coaches Show right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. By the way, we're hanging out here at Old Chicago. We'd love for you to come by and uh, say hi, grab some pizza, some uh, some drinks, and, and have yourself a great time. Uh, the offensive coordinator at Utah State, Bodie Reeder, kind enough to join us. And, Coach, how you doing? Doing well. How are you? Uh, doing well. All right, so obviously 0-2, uh, not the way you want to start a season. Uh, let's talk about the offense and – where you think maybe some stumbles are happening and what you uh, what can be done to try to get this thing back on track? Well, obviously, we need to get better in the passing game and uh, allow Jason to get in a rhythm and, and, and play free. Um, you know, I think that to help us be more explosive, we just got to let him play and take the yeah. breaks off and, 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 and just go play ball, and uh, that's, that's, that's the change we need to make. Uh, what, are you, what are you seeing from him in the first two games, and – and is there something that he can do to try to get himself back on track? You know, really, Jason's a competitor, and he's a gamer, and, and he shows up and, and, and plays his heart out. I think that what he needs to do is just connect the dots a little bit uh, more, and we're going to give him a chance to, uh, you, know, do, you know, do that on his own and, and, and throw the ball down the field some. But, uh, you know, he's a competitor. He's going to continue to get better. He wants to get better, and he, he knows he can play better, and, and he's taking a lot upon himself right now to, to lead the offense. So looking forward to see how he progresses. And that's what you want to see out of your quarterback, too, i got to imagine. Yeah. Take Take, take advantage, or you know, take ownership and, and get this thing going. Yeah, he's a he's a bulldog, and you know he wants to wants to play well, and, and he came here to play and play well, and and he has a burning desire to to prove that he can do it. The uh, and we have seen some moments with Andrew Peasley. How, how have you felt like he's performed? Yeah, Andrew just needs to play for, play more football. He has a bright future ahead of him, and and uh, you know he's a guy that's going to be a very very good player. But you know the times when he's gotten in the game, he just needs to calm down and and you know kind of let the you know things settle in front of him. Uh, he got sped up a little bit at, at Boise and and missed an opportunity to make a throw. Uh, he did some good things in the in the game last weekend, but uh, again, it's just kind of just relaxing and playing ball, and 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 that will come with reps and experience. Seemed like there were moments in that Boise State game, especially in the third quarter, you were able to run the game. Jalen Warren uh, unable to go in, in week number two, but uh, kind of give us your uh, diagnosis of what you see in the running game so far. Well, Jalen's a tremendous running back, and obviously, uh, you know, missed him last week. But there's a, you know, there's good guys behind him, and we have to be able to, to hand it to him and, and lean behind that offensive line, and and you know. Expanding the passing game and getting that passing game going is only going to help those guys run the football. Uh, Jalen uh, in the second half against Boise did a nice job. Uh, you know, he runs hard, runs physical, he can finish runs, and it's me you know, looking forward to having him back. Um, and I think again, involving Jason Shelley in the running game and those quarterbacks is, is going to only help. I thought one of the uh, one of the fun bright spots is seeing Noah. I think he's got a bright future. Yeah, he's a really smooth back, and he, yeah. uh, you know he's not flashy. He, he's not going to wow you sometimes. You know, maybe coming off the bus, but he's a very very smooth back. He falls forward, and he has a good feel for the position. Uh, overall, uh, give me your analysis on the offensive line. It seemed like, especially in that second half, that Boise State game, they were getting a really good push. Yeah, you know, um, Coach Woods does a great job with those guys and getting them, uh, you know, ready in the run game, and, and they've done a, a, a pretty good job protecting, but. It was fun to see him and Boise get behind their pads and and play physical and, and, and show what they're capable of, um, and we look forward to more of that as we go forward. You know, it's going to be a, a big big shot in the arm and a boost for us to get Pule back. Uh, you know, playing the guts for us, and I think that that's going to help. Uh, you know, move some different pieces around to allow us to, to be a little bit more you know stable up front. What does he What does he bring to the table? Well, he's a big dude. You know, number one, he's a, he's a he's a big, thick guy, and he's a people mover. Um, and then you're gonna have some experience around him that will kind of calm the waters for him and allow him to to play and, and help him. You know, see some of the, the uneasy looks and, and filter things out. But he's a big, strong, uh, physical guy. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to having him back. One thing I've noticed about Justin McGriff is. He's got some big paws on him, and when he gets his hand on that ball, you know, a lot of guys bring balls in. He can catch him with his hands, and it's really been fun to see uh, some of his catches throughout the early part of the yeah, season. Yeah, we need to use him more down the field, and that's, that's going to be one of the challenges that we, you know, uh, are, are looking forward to facing. But, you know, he has those big mitts and wants to get the ball in his hands, but he's got to tuck that thing away too, yeah. you know. So, uh, But he, he's a big physical receiver, and we have to use him. Not going to lie, near the end of the first half against San Diego State, I thought you guys were going to shut it down, take a knee, uh, and, and get into halftime. Uh, you pushed the envelope and ended up having one of the uh, one of the prettiest catches I, I think I've seen in a long time from DT in that in the corner of the end zone. Talk us through the decision to go and try to push it down and uh, and 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 what you saw on that drive. Well, uh, you know, it was a two minute type situation. Um, you, you kind of you you run the first play and see what you get, right? Yeah. And, and then you kind of 
it sets the tempo for us to drive. Well, we had a positive first play, got a couple first downs, and then you go, go, go. Um, had a clock situation, allowed us to stop it, run one more, and then now the clock's winding down, so you, you run one more tempo play, and then, you know, DT takes over. You know, it was a really nice play by Jason Shelley, you know, making a play in the pocket and then throwing the ball down the field, and then, you know, players make plays, and you put guys in position to make a play, and, and, and DT did a great job, fantastic catch. Well, he, he certainly did. I mean, and that's, I, and I know that's something. And getting him involved is something that's a that's a big priority for you as well. Yeah, I mean, we have to make sure that he gets going early and often, and give it to him in, in a variety of different ways, put him in different positions uh, within the formations, and you know, it doesn't always have to be you know deep ball down the field. You can hand it to him and or pitch it to him or throw him bubbles, but he's got to be a guy that's involved. What do you see out of Nevada defensively? Well, they play really, really hard. Um, it's a sound scheme. They're going to play a four down front, and they they have multiple uh, blitz packages on third down that can cause your protection some some problems. But you know they do a nice job on the back end of blanking receivers. But uh, it's not real complicated in, in the in the secondary. But they get after you, and they they will try to mix it up up front. That San Diego State defense probably is, might be the best defense you face all year. Yeah, they're pretty dang good. And, you know, what they do with the moving and shaking up front uh, causes your offensive line, you know, trouble because they have to play pretty lateral and they can't, you know, drive forward like they would in a traditional front. And then, you know, their DBs are pretty good playing man coverage. But, um, you know, they, they're just they, – they're really, really good at what they do. Uh, I thought, you know, just for a moment, uh, you and I did a podcast in earlier in the summer. But I think it's important people here to, to get to know you a little bit and, uh, and your background and – and uh, how, you, how you came up the ranks. Okay, well, uh, from Champaign, Illinois, right in the middle of nowhere in, in Illinois, my, my dad was a coach uh, growing up, and he was my high school coach and played ball. And I walked on, um, at, you know, played in college football um, at Eastern Illinois University, actually where Coach Rock uh, was, okay. was one of the coaches. Uh, and was a two-year captain and got to play and, and was an average player. But then GA on defense there at Eastern Illinois when, when Coach Rock was the defensive coordinator. Went to a Division three school in Wisconsin, um, was an offense coordinator at 23 years old or, or <laughs> something like that, and was ex what, exciting chance. To what's play. that like at 23 column plays? Well, uh, I was only a couple months older than some of the players, which yeah. was a unique situation, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I met my wife there. She's from outside of Minneapolis. From there, I went to Oklahoma State University, uh, was with the quarterbacks, and quality control for three years. Um, got married down there at, in Oklahoma, and then went to Eastern Washington University and was offense coordinator, quarterback coach there. Had a couple uh, good seasons. Went to the national championship game in 2018 um, with the backup quarterback and, and had, had a nice year with those guys. Uh, from there, went to North Texas where our son Crew was born, uh, middle name Pass, you know, dad's quarterback coach. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, went to, uh, and then, you know, lucky enough to, to come to uh, Utah State. You know, uh, and, and I talked to some people at, at Eastern Washington, and they all said incredible things about you and, and, and your development and, and as, a, as a coach and as a person. Uh, what was it like there? Because, I mean, there were some high-flying offenses there yeah. at Eastern Washington. No, we, we had a lot of offense, and uh, we were blessed to have some good quarterbacks there and, and, and some good uh, good wideouts and good old linemen and, and guys that, that made plays. But, you know, the thing that was fun about that place is it was all hands on deck, and it kind of get that feeling here. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter what the task is. We're going to get it done. And, you yeah. know, that's the exciting part about, you know, the situation we're in right now. You know, it's, you know, don't tell me how rocky the water is. Just bring the ship home, and that's what we're, we're going to try to get done. I uh, love it. Uh, what's it uh, What's what's it like being a new dad? I guess well, you're a year and a half into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you should ask my wife right now. Yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. Usually, you know, at the uh, office. But, no, it's, it's great. It's the best thing that's ever happened to us. That's awesome. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by, man. We appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, yeah. That's Bodie Reed, our offensive coordinator here at Utah State. Take our final break and come back. We'll talk some defense straight ahead right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
All right, welcome on back. <laughs> uh, now we got our uh, double audio back. Here, guys, just flip your uh, things around. We'll talk like this. All right, so as we, uh, as we get set for a game against Nevada, Coming up on uh, coming up on Thursday, Stacy Collins, Frank Miley, co-defensive coordinator, is kind enough to join us right here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Uh, Coach Miley, let's start with you. Uh, talk about your team's defense so far, so far, and uh, and what you expect against this uh, against this Nevada team coming up on Thursday. Yeah, man. Obviously, uh, you know, two losses in a row back to back, and um, for us, it's it's really really hasn't been playing. The problem really hasn't been playing hard, right? Yeah. You guys are playing hard, but you got to play smarter. Has been the emphasis this week. So for us, just trying to simplify things for them in their minds as far as technique, the fundamentals, uh, coverages, and rushes together, uh, and, and really how to contain this quarterback this week. And so for us, it, it, it's about aligning correctly, communicating correctly, uh, and not giving up big shots this week. Coach Collins, talk a little bit about that because I know that obviously. Um, we talked a little bit after the uh, the Boise State game. You said some of the mistakes that were made, those are correctable. Uh, what's that process like to make sure these guys are on the same page and the communication and everything else is in line to make sure that uh, you guys play well against Nevada? Yeah, certainly. And, and you know, that, those are the things I think that are hardest as a coach as you go back and you watch that tape. There's mistakes from whether that's an alignment standpoint, whether that's a communication standpoint. We have a mantra at our place that, you know, communication breeds confidence. We've got to clean that up, force people to earn things, you know, not yeah. give them things. And, and give Boise and, and San Diego State credit. They're, they're talented offensive teams. But at the same time, you, you've got to be able to make them earn it, work it. And I would say the same thing with Nevada. You know, they're, they're explosive on the offensive side, very, very good at the skill position-wise, but uh, they can also run the football. There's a uh, wide receiver named Dobbs. It seems like he's catching everything in sight right now, averaging – well over, I think, what, 130, 140 yards a game. What makes him so special? Oh, he's a big playmaker. He's got great size, run great routes, and, you know, the quarterback's done an unbelievable job of getting the ball in, into an area where he can catch it. And They've got, caught the ball in tight windows. They've made explosive plays, and uh, he's a dang good football player. What do you see uh, from Nevada, especially Coach Miley in that, in that quarterback? What jumps out at you when you look at him on film? Man, just consistency. You know, he does a great job reading the field, reading coverages, uh, understanding what his strengths are. He has a great arm, man. He can sling it down the field. And he, you know, he does a great job distributing the ball to everybody uh, yeah. equally. And when he gets an opportunity, he's going to take a shot. He's done a great job with it. And he's got explosive receivers, and he knows how to use them. Uh, what when you're when you're in a uh, you know when, when you're in, I don't want to say a rut, but when when you're struggling a little bit defensively, coach. Um, and and let, let's start with you, Coach Collins, on this. What's the message to your guys to make sure you keep your head up, but you also know you got to do better? What, what's, what are those conversations like? Well, I think they're very they're very straightforward and they're very direct. And we've got a group of guys that are, are, will work their ass off, work themselves off with that. So that it's a matter of the details. It's a matter of cleaning up the details, and it's everybody involved. You know, with, with the whole defensive side, our kids understand that. They're they're focused on that now. It's a matter of putting that product on the field as, as a whole defensive staff and as a defensive unit. Coach Miley, what, what are your thoughts there? You know, it's, it's accountability on everybody's part, right? Coaches and players, and our players have done a great job taking accountability for for what they didn't get done on, on Saturday as well as the coaching staff, and it's really about cleaning everything up and getting on the same page. So uh, for these guys, man, we're fortunate, man. We have tough kids, but they're hungry. You yeah. know what I mean? So, so keeping them hungry to, to continue to look for that next win uh, for our first win this year hasn't been hard for us, right, because uh, – you know, that's the type of personalities we're dealing with right now. Yeah. But they've, never, they've done a great job listening this week. Uh, and so really it's going to come down to execution of the game plan. So you feel the buy-in is obviously still there? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Coach Collins, uh, you know, we always talk about, you know, you have to have a short-term memory. Well, when you play on a Thursday after a physical game on Saturday, you really don't have a lot of time to, to feel sorry for yourself. you got to get back at it. No, and nobody's going to feel sorry for you either. So you better be able to strap them up, lace them up, get out there, and get back to work. And I think our, our kids have done a great job with that. And I think Coach Miley hit it on the head. You know, they, they've taken that on top of it. And us as a defensive staff, we've got to do a better job of making sure we're in those positions and making those plays. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you you got to have some good leadership on that team. Coach Collins, talk a little bit about those leaders and how they're handling this. Well, I think as you, as you work through, we've got a, a couple of guys that really stand out. Justice Tay has just been unbelievably inconsistent, up, or unbelievably consistent up front with his play, his attitude, and his work ethic. Shaq Bonds an unbelievable job of holding that together, and a handful of other seniors. So uh, that's a credit to those guys. They've done a, they've done a great job being in the situation we're in right now. What's your message to the guys right now, Coach Miley? Stick to the plan. Stick yeah. to the plan. Stay focused. There's a blueprint to winning. Uh, the kids understand that. We just got to stick to it. So don't deviate from the game plan. Uh, we've all been there before as yeah. coaches and players. And uh, 
a lot of us older guys have been here when we've had a lot of success, so they understand that if we stick to the to the game plan, everything will be okay. What's uh, what's a game day like between the two of you, and what's what's the communication like, Coach Collins? I'll, I'll let you kind of break that down and uh, on on the relationship with the coaching staff and how information gets disseminated down to the field. Yeah, you know, we have a great defensive staff, and that. that we're able to get a lot of different ideas. It certainly starts throughout the whole week, and it's always been a collaborative plan. You know, me and Coach Molly have worked together here for going on five years now, and so that's that's worked smoothly. But the rest of the other defensive staff is a huge part of what we're doing, how we're doing it throughout the week. And then as you go through game day, you know, once once we're off the field, I mean, there's clear communication as we go through each position group, each area, what we need to do, what we know what we need to do, how do we change, you know, what are some ideas, and uh, it's been good. And we just got to find a way to make sure we execute in those situations. What's, uh, from your perspective, down on the field, you get to have those more one-on-one -on -one interactions with those players. What do you feel like your role is as kind of a, you know, as a, as a leader and, and kind of the, the mouthpiece of the defensive coaching staff down on the field? Uh, is that something that you, you enjoy having that that man-on-man intera -man interaction instead of being up in the booth? Yeah, it is, man. I'm a hands-on person, so yeah. if I was in the booth, I'd be going crazy. I might, I might jump out of the booth, but <laughs> but it, it's great to have hands-on with these guys and look into their eyes to see, kind of get a feel of, of where they're at mentally uh, throughout the game. And so my job is really to communicate the eyes up top with Coach Collins yeah. uh, to the players and what he sees and what we can do better and, and making sure everybody's on the same page. And I'm getting that look in their eyes back to me in return that they're going to get it done. Uh, Coach Collins, how much of a... Uh, Relief was to see in uh, Troy Leffridge back out there. It was great to have Troy. You know, he's, he's an unbelievable person, unbelievable player for us, and to get him back on the field was, was great. And just, a, you know, and, and a bit of a safety blanket, too. Absolutely. No pun intended. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, so one thing I want to talk to you, because you guys kind of lead the way in recruiting, and I talked to Coach A about this as well. Uh, we talked during the summer, and at that point, the recruiting period just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and continues to get a push back. I know you guys don't have a lot of slots available, but still, how difficult is it, Coach Miley, to try to analyze who these kids are and what their makeup is without being able to get your eyes on them? Man, it, it's extremely hard to tell you the truth. And so part of our, the biggest part of our evaluation has always been live evaluations, yeah. right? Uh, getting in, in kids at home, really trying to figure out how tough is a kid, right? Because toughness is a big part of, of what we're looking for as far as recruits, and that's the foundation of who we are. So we're looking for those types of kids, but not to have that interaction with them in their school, with their coaches in person, with uh, with their family, and how they carry themselves is, is, is extremely hard. And the fact that we can't go to football games to see them, uh, to get that live evaluation, is hard for us to simply just go off of film. Yeah, uh, you, you can obviously see skill sets on film, but to see them live is, is totally different than seeing them on film. Coach Collins, you know, I'm sure you talk to a lot of head coaches, and they always say, oh, my kid, that kid's great. He'll be a great college player, you know, because he wants his kid to be recruited. He wants his kid to get signed. So how hard is it to take that with a grain of salt and try to make an evaluation without being able to get your eyes on him? It's extremely hard because I think a huge part of the recruiting process is truly getting to know these kids, you know, from a standpoint of getting into high school, talking to people who have non-vested interest to them. When you walk in there, how, what's the secretary say? Or maybe just from her body language. What's the algebra teacher say? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you learn so much from that in-person contact. And, and you know, tape is certainly one, a heavy evaluation tool for us, but all those other intangibles, especially a developmental program like Utah State, you have to find the right fit here. And when we do, you know, it, it's been great, but it, it's tough. You know, and I've talked to multiple head coaches today. <laughs> High school head coaches called me today, yeah. you know, in the same, same situation. And so it's it's been a struggle, but everybody's going through it. You know, I had uh, I, I knew a kid that was getting recruited, and I knew his family really well. and. And, uh, and so they saw his film, and, they, and they, they were at his school, and they're like, well, I want to see your dad. I want to see what you're going to look like in four or five years and, and stuff like that. That's stuff you can't do, you know, when you're can't away. Can't do it anymore. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Is, by the way, is that common? Kind of see what, what kind of frame the guy's going to have? and Because and, so much – you're a developmental school at Utah State. Correct. And, uh, and so you kind of have to take a kid and they kind of project what he's going to be. Correct. In three, four, in some cases with a mission, five, six years. Absolutely. And so those home visits are important for us, right? Yeah. If we love a kid, right, and we're not sure how much bigger he's going to get, uh, one of those factors is genetically, yeah. you know, what, what, is, what kind of cars does he got? You know, and so seeing his mom and dad, how big are they? Did they play sports? Uh, was his dad big, small yeah. in high school, and then he grew up? You know, all those things come into play when evaluating these kids genetically. Coach Collins, how's it? You know, there's, and this is just kind of a general question. 
How much do you like kids that play multi-sports instead of just focusing in on football? I love it. I mean, I, I do. And, and you wish you'd seen it more and more. But as you go through, you, you've seen the studies from the NFL as it worked through. But those different skill sets are saying, especially when you're talking yeah. like DBs and, and baseball, be able to track the ball. There's just, as you go through different, you know, explosiveness from track, you know, all those different sports, I think it's a huge part. And it's sad to me that we're seeing that go away with the specialization. Well, gentlemen, good luck on Thursday. Look forward to catching up the after game, talking about a W, all right? No doubt. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. Scott. There you go, Coach Collins, Coach Miley. That wraps it up for us. Big thanks to everyone who helped us out on tonight's show. This has been the Gary Anderson Coaches Show on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.